Hey. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> well, hey, what's up, peaches? Um, how you guys doing? Um, yes, this is my face. I don't know if it matches the voice, <laughs> but this is my face. Um, I hope you don't mind. I've got some notes down here. Today, we are looking at um, 2 Timothy 3 and 4. And um, before we get into that, let me just say that if you are enjoying this video, why don't you hit that little subscribe button in the corner? I'm not sure if it's on the side or on that side. But I would appreciate it if you could um, sub to the channel and hit the notification bell because then you can be notified every time I release a video. <laughs> this is really new for me, guys. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so, well, if you've been here before, you know that before we tackle the Word of God, we're going to do two things. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to pray. So if you don't mind, for a second, just close your eyes with me and then we'll just do a little pray. We'll just say thank you to God for the Word. So I don't even know where to look, guys. <laughs> anyway. Okay, let's just close our eyes for a second. Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the understanding that comes with your word and for helping us to build our lives on your word, the solid rock of Jesus Christ, Lord. And thank you for helping us to move forward in our lives and to have this understanding so that we can improve our lives on a daily basis. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, unless otherwise indicated, all the following scripture quotations are taken from the Holy Bible New Living Translation with copyright by Tyndall House Foundation and used by permission of Tyndall House Publishers, all rights reserved. Okie dokie, now that that's out of the way, here we go. 2 Timothy 3 What's interesting about this chapter is that it starts with stern warning. Maybe it's not unusual for this to start with a stern warning because like uh, the previous chapter that we've read also started with a stern warning but Paul actually starts off describing an individual to us that would definitely not be considered or be described as a Christian or, or someone that wouldn't necessarily be part of the faith. He says the characteristics of such a person are that they only love themselves and money, they are boastful and proud, disobedient to authority disobedient to their parents is what he says and they are ungrateful they are unloving and unforgiving and they have no self-control uh, he said also that they will turn their backs on their friends and they will behave like they are religious but they are only superficially religious and he then gives Timothy a stern warning to stay away from those type of people right he says that they oppose the truth and have to quote these words he says that they have depraved minds and counterfeit faith. So we should be on the lookout for people that have counterfeit faith and we should avoid them. And I think that's a really interesting way to start the chapter there. Right? So, thinking about counterfeit faith, how do we know that they have counterfeit faith? Well, if you know the scripture from Matthew 7 verse 15, which says that we will know who false prophets are by the fruits, then you know that when you know someone by their fruits, it means that you know them by what they produce, right? And even Paul in 2 Timothy 3 verse 10 says, But you, Timothy, certainly know what I teach, how I love, and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith, my patience, my love, and my endurance. So Paul is actually saying that his message and his belief is evidenced by how he loves so we will see them by their fruit or by what they produce how they love and who they are essentially so we will know who counterfeit christians are by these um, by this little test that we can do right then from verse 11 paul affirms that there will be struggles and persecution i know that the temptation is to be like oh jesus take the struggle from me but maybe we need to start getting comfortable with being uncomfortable because it comes with the territory. If you're a Christian, you're going to have to be uncomfortable at some point. Um, think about Jonah. He just didn't want to go <laughs> to Nineveh. <laughs> but he had to go at the end of the day. And the purpose here is that God is glorified in our actions. So, moving on. Okay. Paul then goes on to encourage Timothy to stick with what he has learned. And he, he introduces a little bit about Timothy to us, the reader, and says that Timothy has been raised and educated in a background uh, with the scriptures, right? Um, yeah, 
but he also takes it a step further right he says that learning the scriptures enabled timothy to have wisdom to receive salvation which i think is really cool that um, the scriptures are going to give us a wisdom to understand what it is that we receive from god what is this thing about salvation and i really can't stress how important it is for a christian to learn and understand and know the word of god to read the bible basically that's it. i can't stress how important this is the true salvation and repentance and learning about how deep god's love is for us and why jesus sacrifice was important for us and to us only comes from the bible so if you're not reading your bible you might be going into the counterfeit christian territory the counterfeit faith territory you can't just go in your feelings you have to read your bible so while your your connection to the holy spirit is important your, your feelings or your sense of what the spirit is saying is important it's not more important than learning the word of god they go hand in hand with each other so we have to read the word okay uh, to read the word actually you don't need a pastor or someone experienced to explain things to you you can just sit by yourself and read the word ask god to reveal to you what it is what's his intention in his word what he wants you to know but it's always good to have somebody with a sound theological background around in case you get stuck you don't understand the scriptures and you've got someone to ask because i think that that's helpful <laughs> i really think it's helpful but you don't have to you can do it on your own i started reading the bible on my own i've been saved since young and it took me until like last year to start reading the bible <laughs> because i just didn't know where to start and what to do and i actually have a video on that if you want to check it out how to read the bible i will put a title card somewhere around here okie dokie yeah so the bible is actually really user friendly god wants us to read the bible so he made it user friendly and keep that in mind when you are trying to approach um, reading the bible okay so i'm going to quote the end of the chapter here uh, 2 timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 to emphasize what i'm saying about the scriptures so it says all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Now said. Well, alrighty, tighty, I hope that you are still with me. Now we are on to the last chapter of the book of 2 Timothy, which is 2 Timothy 4. Okay. This chapter opens with Paul urging Timothy to preach the gospel, whether or not it seems like an opportune time to do so. He encourages Timothy to patiently, patiently correct people with the word. And to patiently, he says, patiently correct, rebuke and encourage people with the word. This scripture speaks to me, especially as like a long-term Christian. Um, so I sometimes get so caught up and excited in sharing the word that I eventually become very pushy about it and be like, no, you got to understand the word from this point of view, from my perspective. And this is really dangerous. It's, it's a bad attitude to have. Despite doing something great, doing something wonderful, it's a really bad attitude to have about the word of God. And yeah, I'm admitting it. It's something that sometimes I need to change. And um, I think that it's important that we remember to be patient with other people when expressing our beliefs and trying to share what the Holy Spirit shared with us. Some people are not sensitive to the things that we have learned. So we still need to listen to the Spirit for how we address those issues and share with other people. So I really think it's good to be patient there. Right? And um, the truth is that we don't have the power to forgive sins. So even if you're sharing the gospel and you want people to understand uh, God's forgiveness, you don't have that power. <laughs> we don't have the power. God has the power. We just, it's kind of like you're the conduit for that power. You are not the power itself, you're the conduit. So you you can't, you can't do it. <laughs> yeah, <I> love puns. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So sometimes you just need to put the word out and then take a step back. And that's really it about that. Okay, verse 3 and 4 hits a little too hard in this day and age. Um, people seem to really not know what the truth is. <laughs> 
if you take a look around, there are so many people that just don't know what the truth is and are comfortable believing a lie or they are comfortable um, just like taking a step back and not having a standpoint on what should be common knowledge, what should be common understanding, especially as Christians. And this is so dangerous because all these weird and different beliefs, I shouldn't say weird, <laughs> but all these different beliefs can really cause people to go astray from the faith. And we need to remember that we find out we find out what the truth is from the Bible. So like I said, we've got to read the Bible in order to find out what the truth is, right? You are much less likely to be manipulated if you are reading your Bible. I'm not saying it's impossible to be manipulated, but read your Bible. <laughs> yeah. So the only answer to everything is Jesus. That's it. Anything that's leading you away from Jesus you can pretty much count that as something that's not <laughs> not going to tie in with the Bible. Because the whole Bible, if you ever have done any Bible study or even just listen to your pastor on a Sunday, if he preaches the message of Jesus Christ, which he should be, <laughs> it all points us to Jesus. So if something is not pointing to Jesus, if something is pointing you away from the gospel, um, the gospel is that Jesus died and rose from the dead. That is the gospel. If something's pointing away from that, you can pretty much count it as a counterfeit truth right there. So yeah, so something that's interesting that we see as we got to the end of the chapter is that Paul mentioned that he did all these things for the glory of God and that a prize awaits him. He mentions something called the crown of righteousness. Now, I don't know what the crown of righteousness is. Maybe it's really a crown. But I kind of the way I kind of figured it is, it's probably something more akin to like a medal. And like, oh cool, here's your, uh, what do you call it? Like a Girl Scout or Boy Scout badge. Or like, here's the badge of righteousness. Here's the badge of faith. Here's the badge of salvation or whatever. But an interesting point to think about is, why do we serve God? What is the point of serving God? You see, the thing is, I, I started thinking about this recently, but what happens if there is no badge saying you did great? If they, What if there's no reward? What if there's no... We know the Bible says that God's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And the thing is, what if there was no reward? Why do you serve Christ? Why do you serve God? It's something to really take a look at and analyze within yourself. Why am I serving God? Why am I doing this? What's the purpose? And here's another question. If you got nothing out of it, would you still serve Him? Would you still serve God if you got absolutely nothing out of serving God? The great thing is we do get salvation. But if you got nothing, would you still do it? Anyway... So Paul's final words include some very sad news. He says that Demas has deserted him, right? And it's easy to look on Demas and be like, oh, damn it, Demas. What the hell, Demas? <laughs> you know, be like, oh, this Demas again. But uh, the truth of the matter is we do what Demas has done all the time. Paul says that Demas loved the things of this life too much and went his own way. And... The truth of the matter is we do this on a daily basis. We sometimes get caught up with life, sometimes it's Instagram, sometimes it's Facebook or WhatsApp, Twitter, whatever, whatever it is. But these things pull us away from God. And it is really important to remember to go back, to go back to God and to not let our distractions move us away from God. And this is really important. And if you are feeling like a little bit like a Demis right now, if you're feeling a little bit like Demis, I'm going to encourage you to listen to Jonathan McReynolds' song, Make Room. I will link it in the description. I urge you to listen to it and just meditate on the words. Go and sing it. Copyright issues, but <laughs> maybe we'll see in the future. But yeah, so if you're feeling like a Demis, happens to everyone. It's just continuously move back towards Christ. Okay, in verse 14, we have Paul being sassy again. <laughs> He's talking about Alexander the coppersmith who is being mean and nasty and working against him. And um, let's be honest, even though we kind of feel like, oh, how can a person be so negative about the enemies and all those kind of things? The truth is, take a look at the book of Psalms. Like the entire beginning of the book of Psalms is the writer, which I believe is David. 
who is just saying things like, Lord, vindicate me from my enemies. Lord, take care of these people because they are working on my nerves. They're my haters or <laughs> anything like that. And it just tells you that you can go to God with this problem. You can go to God when your haters are acting up <laughs> because they do that. And that's, that's part of the persecution that Paul talks about that we face. Your head is going to act up. Your head is going to hate. Your potato is going to protect. <laughs> so, yeah, that that's what we have to do. We have to go to God with whatever it is and just leave it in His hands. Let's not jump to our own conclusions of, oh, I need to get up in this balding year and sort this person out. Let's just take it and leave it in God's hands. Because in, in a sense, it's kind of like the Christian version of karma. But the truth is that we've just got to leave it in God's hands. He's, he's, he understands poetic justice when it comes to getting, getting your own. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Well, then the book ends off with Paul sending his greetings to all of those who are his friends and allies. I love Paul's greetings. He's like, greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ and may God be with you and all this kind of stuff. All the Yoda kind of <laughs> vibes. As you can see, I love Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, so I really love Paul's greetings. But let's take a look at what we've learned very quickly. Uh, sorry about the fake accent thing. I was practicing my fake accents today while reading. <laughs> I love doing it for fun. Anyway, so what have we learned in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 4? We learned to stay away from counterfeit Christians, which is the Christian equivalent of uh, what is known as a Vater Slumps here in South Africa. <laughs> We learn to identify counterfeit Christians from how they behave, what they teach, and how they live. We, Paul also reminded us that persecution is normal for a Christian. Right? We must learn to accept it and we should be able to share the gospel under any circumstance. We learn that reading our Bible is important and we don't want to be led in the wrong direction. We also learn that we have to check our attitude when sharing the gospel with others. We learn to check our motives for serving God. Uh, we also learned not to be too hard on ourselves if we stray, but to remember that once we see something pulling us away from God, we need to move back towards God and reorganize our priorities. And we learned that we should let God take care of our haters <laughs> and that we can pray about our enemies. So I think that the book of 2 Timothy gives us some solid life advice. And I think that... If you read the book of 2 Timothy, keeping all these things in mind can really help you to build a very strong Christian character. Anyway, our scripture of the day comes from Genesis 1 verse 4 to 7, which says, And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. Then God said, Let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. God made the space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heaven. So what does that have to do with your day today? Well, what I believe God is trying to say to us today is that sometimes separation is good. We should separate ourselves from things and from people that are not of God. Um, sometimes it's hard, but separation is good. And this ties in with Matthew 5 verse 30, which talks about, if you know the scripture, talks about cutting off one of your hands that's causing you to sin, because rather that piece of you is lost than your whole body go to hell or die or something like that is the phrasing. But that's the whole point here. Let's just cut off those pieces of ourselves. It may be painful, but sometimes we need to let some things and some people go because they are not from God or they are not good for us. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Yes, this is my face. <laughs> you can check out my links below. And I'm going to be updating my Wattpad really soon. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so nervous. <laughs> um, I hope that you have a phenomenal day and that your weekend is up to a good start. Cheerio!